Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Plus Three Futures and Commodities Show. We're recording Friday evening, September 30th, end of the month, end of the quarter. Uh, my name is Ben Maldonado. As always, I'm here with my partner, Barry Hedarachi. Barry, how you doing? You made it through another month and another quarter. <laughs> and another week. <laughs> and another week, which felt like a month. <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. There's a lot of, lot of interesting stuff happening. Holy moly, man. And, and the cycles are getting more intense and uh, it's just, it's all coming together. Yeah. So except for Bitcoin, Bitcoin looks rather boring since summer. Mm -hmm. looks almost perfectly sideways. But you know, one of the things about markets is a dull, what follows a dull market, right? <laughs> Chaos. Mm -hmm. So nothing's changed since last week. You know, we're still, you know, messing around with this fractal. It looks like we're in this part here where there we were at least rolling over a little bit here. We're just kind of going sideways. Mm -hmm. uh, we did put in the peak. We're still below the full square, so that's bearish. We're still above the half square, so that's that's kind of the target right now. The pressure's down to the half square. And our, our target is still, you know, this box of 9,000 to 12,000. The thing I would say is, notice how here it was kind of boring, boring, little small bars, and then all of a sudden, all hell broke loose. Is that coming here? Possible. We do know we have targets down here. We do know we haven't been able to get above this full square. We've just been consolidating below previous lows, which is bearish. So is this the week or is next week the week? I mean, there's a lot of um, a lot of cycles coming in that could have a panic signature to them. So maybe we do get the wash coming up, but we'll, but we'll see. Um, anything else to add here on Bitcoin? I know it, when it goes sideways, there's not much to say. Not much other than to say the, um, I think we're, pressure is probably to the downside till we cross that downtrend line. Mm -hmm. So that's the big battle. Either we, you know, we tapped it <clears throat> a few times, three times now, but the next time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. either we break through that or we go and check that half square, if not, if not lower. So right. yeah, for now, not much like we've been saying, you know, it, it's weak before, built under the big square. Other than that, just sort of uh, sideways, really no higher highs, no lower lows, just just perfectly sideways, perfectly grinding away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so we leave, see leave it, I mean, there, there are much more exciting markets to be trading at this point. So absolutely. This is the anomaly, man. Everything else is really, really moving and coming to interesting spots. So uh, on today's show, we're going to cover, you know, the big five with Barry, which is the ES, uh, the dollar, the euro, gold, silver, crude, copper. And my part, I'm going to I'm going to bring up three commodities, wheat, corn and silver. So we got a full show. Let me throw it back to you and let's uh, let's get into it. Busy week in ES busy week we finally decided to uh, take a look a little lower right yeah yeah your the, your levels gave way so we'll see what happens that, here half it's square got a, tested what's that i said the half square got tested multiple days and then gave it up mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so this 3619 was a long time spot to watch and well like ben said we were sitting on top of it all week up until the close today and it's possible it was the expiration pressure that pushed it lower so we'll have to wait and see and and this kind of a it could be nothing mm -hmm. at the same time we made new lows for the quarter for the year and the year lowest weekly close yep. right but on a quarter right so it's kind of an important point here and on a quarterly chart on weekly charts we can say we got to the lower support and pressed through it so let's take a look at the uh, weekly and everything else to see what's happening. Man, your 180 timing was really good, wasn't it? Well, that's the thing, you know, when the 180, when the, you know, lines hit correctly, everything, you know, sort of falls into place. Mm, it's really and nice. There was a chart I wanted to share. Just give me a second to find it, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so this is the... It's the S&P. S&P, and I use this just for timing. Mm -hmm. And if you look at today, basically it lines up to today. Wow. All right, look at the time count. I posted this on, I think I posted it on Twitter. I, I hope I did. Yeah, I think I saw it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So here we have 270 degrees mm -hmm. from the high. All right. We are 180 from the March high. Mm -hmm. 45 from the August high. Man. Yeah. So, I mean, those are like, you know, those are porn, big. you know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. They're big. And then we have 101 low to low. So all of these are really important and it's possible we put in that kind of a low with this kind of a push just to flush everything period all right mm -hmm. let's move <laughs> back to our charts i want to finish talking about this now we saw the timing it's all here it's all lined up in, in a number of different ways what happens from here is when you have that kind of timing coming in it's really important that we move away from that quickly. <laughs> I was going to say, if, if we don't, that's trouble. If we don't, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's going to signal a lot of stuff. So mm -hmm. we, we, and you know, on the last one, we were 45 by 45 degrees by 90, right? From the last mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. So everything lines up textbook wise. I mean, chart wise, uh, technically. It all looks like, hey, we should get a change in trend in this, you know, Monday, Tuesday, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have that. That's the technical look without anything added. Now, the two ways this can happen, uh, what, what can unfold is we hold the lows or we, you know, we can mess around a little bit here, but we need to reverse immediately on Monday, get above our 36.20 and close above it, right? We have to do that. Maybe close above 36, 40 or so. Mm -hmm. And that would tell us, hey, we have a run up, at least maybe a week or even a couple of weeks or maybe even longer. But because of the tiny kind of cycles that lined up to the low, it's, you know, it, it's, it's a big deal. If we can close a little higher, you know, let's say 36, 20 or 40 Monday, hopefully ideally, but you know, our market is, so maybe it's Tuesday. Mm -hmm. But we can't really go much lower. You know, we can maybe go let's see, 36. Yeah, we can go 15 points lower maybe. But we need to turn around here in the next couple of days. And then if we do that, okay, we, have, we can go higher. And it could be a very, you know, quick sort of a squeezy kind of a move. The bad part is if we don't, if we can't recover this 36, 20, 40 level, then I think we're down for a good bit. We might rally, but the whole pattern looks like we're going to, you know, because remember, that means we're taking this 90 out, right? Mm -hmm. So that opens up at least down to, what's that number there, Ben? <laughs> it's 30, 30 50, 50. Right? So it opens up a lot of space. And with the cycles we have, Barry, it opens up a yeah. potential for a panic. And if not that low... Yeah. At least 33.60, okay? So that's kind of what we're looking at. Anything you want to add to that? Just that um, next weekly support is 35.16 on my stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's down there, you know, another 100 points down, basically. Yeah. Um, and with, like I said, with the cycles that are there, if we slip and can't, you know, can't hold these lows that we just made, there, there's a real, real potential of a panic. You know, while a panic is rare, the, the way things have lined up and the cycles have lined up this month, there's there's a real shot at it if we lose these important levels. Well, let's see how it goes. But that's what you guys have to watch for next week. You want to look at this block here, let's say 3620. And we really want to get on top of that um, right away. Monday, Tuesday, Monday. Preferably mm -hmm. without really dropping below, let's say... Uh, let's say 3580 to the downside. And mm -hmm. we don't want to really get below that. If we do that, if we get under and, you know, like we say, get stuck under, then, um, well, now you know what the targets are. What's the weekly look like? Well, let's go take a look at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just going to mention it. So the weekly, I drew up this little box last week to say, you know, we could do a false break, but we really want to try to stay in that box, ideally. And um, if we don't have the 3570 as a target, so it's possible. Remember I said, you know, 3580 mm -hmm. is kind of where we want to go. But knowing the market's always pushing a little bit further. So 
this 3570 might hit that and reverse immediately. But whatever um, we hit, I mean, if we hit this, let's expand that room we have to run. Let's say we have, we, we have till 3570. Mm -hmm. If we hit that and we somehow manage to stay above it, we need to get above 3620 level right away, like mm -hmm. the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. If we don't, and we really, and if we, you know, do I dare say we sleep under 3572, then, well, it, it technically it opens up the entire, you know, it, it's, a, it's a lot of uh, space below. You see the next mm -hmm. half square. Yep. And so that's what will happen. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> this is a pivotal spot. No question about it. Yes. And a lot of markets are squaring in here. Um, so, we're, it, you know, the energy is really strong, right, as far as that goes. So we'll have to see how that plays out. But what, now we know the sort of the frame to work this thing. Let's move on to bonds. You know, when you were talking about equities and the and the, the ES there, I was thinking about bonds. I was like, bonds have been leading leading equities. And remember, remember we had critical spots on bonds on the way down where we had squares and we were like, okay, it needs to turn, it needs to hold here, mm -hmm. and it would just give it up. It, would, right. it needs to hold here and it would just give it up. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the, if bonds are leading equities in that manner too. We'll see. Well, bonds also came to a long time target, right? We're 270 degrees down. Yes. From the high. We're also 90 from the last, the August high. And, you know, we just had enough overrun. So this looks like it's, uh, you know, we have a good chance to uh, hold the low and, and, and either consolidate or have a little bit of a counter trend before we start back again. It's also in a uh, sort of squared out position. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's the bonds. So for next week, I'm expecting these lows to hold. The critical, the, the critical thing about here is on a normal, any other time you can say, well, if it takes it out, it'll go here and then it'll bounce. And the, the, the problem, what I'm seeing with a lot of these major markets is it's one of these things where if it goes, it's not going to find support here or there. I mean, it's just going to go. There's a lot more downside. So that's the thing I notice. It's not a, you know, we'll go down a little, bounce a little. No, it, it's like we have a lot more to go. It gives it up. I mean, it's, it becomes like a panic once those levels give way. Yeah. And you can see how if you just go back, you know, to a quick, two minute, uh, 30, 60 second lesson. We took out this square here, you know, we had 90 down, you know, we couldn't really hold it, gave it up, you know, we phew, straight down, right? Mm -hmm. 60, 60 degrees. Rally back up, couldn't do it, back down to the 50%. Rally up, couldn't do it, back down to the 90. So 90 is what we're watching here, you know, break here, break mm -hmm. here. Again, what did we do? We did the exact same 60 we did here. It's the same move, right? Mm -hmm. We rallied, couldn't, obviously we couldn't do it, boom, to 90. So do, we do 90, you know, 90, 90. So we're doing 90. That's why I'm saying if this goes, 360 is really the next target. And that's no joke. <laughs> it's almost par. Like I said, it's no joke, right? It's just some mm -hmm. serious business here, mm -hmm. serious damage. Mm -hmm. So 112 and a half or so is the next target if we take the low out. And I think we will eventually take this low out, but because of the way all the cycles lined up and we have this 270 is kind of an important support. Uh, you can see, you know, you can bounce on it, then kind of mess around for a month or so, you know, 30 days. You can see how we did it here, right? Mm -hmm. right? And here we bounced, uh, bounced off for a few days, two weeks, and then right through it. So I think long as we're above it, we can kind of bounce around up, up above. So this is, not, I, this is a good example of holding above. Mm -hmm. and, and we already talked about what could happen if we get under that because of the critical level. And, and here's 360. It's, uh, the game's getting serious there. <laughs> no question. All right. So weekly is, uh, we're using a square of 40, uh, 72 here. And looks like it's not going to be done till we get down to, you know, 114, 115. That's really all I have to say there. <laughs> we, we might correct here a little bit. And it looks like we'll be holding, you know, all the corrections should hold under 132 and looks like they will for the time, time being. And 
if that's the case, then this target's so widely, you know, wide open. Anything yeah, on my add? yeah, on my weeklies and monthlies, the low was on very important support, like full square support, one twenty five oh six, one twenty six fifteen. So right in there, weekly, monthly. Uh, if they like you were saying, if if we lose that, it opens up a whole another half square on big time frames, weekly and monthly. Right, right. So those lows are really important. Mm -hmm. Next, we go on to crude and the great circle. Great circle, <laughs> and they never make it easy. Of course, no, uh, no, we're dancing but, on it right but now. But here's the theme. All right, so look at look at how you know it's all at critical levels, right? Look, look, you know, we looked at. We saw the S&P at the critical level. Bonds already bounced off to the square. And here's crude. You know, we're a square and a half down. Yep. There it is. You know, we bounced two off squares over. And guess where we found resistance? Exactly at the 83 we've been talking about this entire time. And this is just like the bonds, right? We, we, if we hold above the low, we should go higher. At least get some kind of a counter trend. Mm -hmm. Look, we haven't even got near the upper channel line. Nope. So, matter of fact, the channel just got steeper. <laughs> so, right, right. So, looks like we broke out of the circle. I mean, circle is not the, you know, end all and be all. So, it's just, it's a guide. So, we know when it gets to the end, which happens to, just happens to be 144 days out. Which so is we're super out. important. Yeah. So, we're, it's a critical time. We're breaking out at a critical time window circle just happens to be there and what i'm saying is if we hold about these lows i think we'll probably go back and test the 91 to 95 level up here if we take that out then we have to go the full square and that'll be around 60 bucks 58 it says here but let's say 60 right 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 so and there's our box from earlier so we, that's the old support that's around uh, that's 60 right there so i'll just extend that out <laughs> yeah that's the downside if we take out take out the low we have in place upside is going to kick in if we hold the lows anything you want to add just just like bonds and a lot of markets we're hitting you know weekly month we hit weekly monthly support and crude on my stuff you know the weekly was around 76 monthly mm -hmm. was around you know 75 and three quarters and we hit it and bounced so it's it's a big spot do we hold it or do we lose it mm -hmm. and head back down you know for even more in the meantime these uh, channels are just getting steeper and steeper so the idea about the circle just to finish it up the idea is once it breaks now we'll see this unfold in real time if it really works and luckily we also had a square at the same time i mean it's off by one bar so it's good enough mm -hmm yeah and we good. know the square is good because we did 72 high to high and then we did 72 low to high so the potential is definitely there by the book and if we hold these lows we can have a nice nice trade to the upside so that's what you have to really keep in mind and for this circle to work the way the circle helps is we know now we're in a critical window right it's a very tight window it's right in here we know if the low holds and we start you know our buy setups start lining up we have to go with it and, and it'll probably be a worthwhile trade absolutely let's look at the weekly crude ideally it would have been great to get down to uh 75 73 was really the target we had 73 75 so we're not quite there they don't have to be there so we'll see um i just wanted to show you the weekly square here so you see on the 90, we're, we're through the halfway point, right? We're stuck under. Mm -hmm. If we look at the 72, we're, I mean, that was that big battle. I remember we were reading this for a while. Oh, yeah. It broke yep. Down. yep. Yeah, we're at the, at the three quarters, which is kind of support. And, and that's why there's, it's possible that something can happen there. So based, this is a weekly chart. So weeklies, you know, Gan always looked at, you know, Gan said the 52, Square 52 is really to look at the weekly charts because of the 52 weeks. And if you look at that, you know, we're down 52 degrees. So it's possible, like I said, we're seeing some signs that we're, we're near support. Uh, the reason I picked 75 is these things notoriously just go under below the level 
right? Push a little bit like a false break and then turn. Mm -hmm. So we're in the neighborhood for sure in the weekly, but weekly is a little bit slow. <laughs> so yeah, going back to the daily is much easier. We know the low from last week is the critical point to the downside. Anything, any reversal within last week's low and 83 would set up to the upside. That's my take on crude. Move on to gold. Well, we did square out. We talked about this last week and uh you know had a had a sort of a false break big outside reversal and had followed through so it looks okay looks okay as far as the, the square goes <laughs> and we 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 didn't quite break any of these channel lines but for now i think the key to watch is if we can hold above 1646 then we can say you know it's starting to it's picking up some buyers it's, we can say that so the key level to watch is 1646 next week. And of course, if the 1676 area, we settle above that, basically settling above or to the upside of that consolidation, then it'll set up another test for the 1800 level. Okay. Kind of looks like crude, doesn't it? it looks like crude, exactly. Mm -hmm. Let that play out. Now, like all the charts we've been looking at so far, so there's a square. Now, what I didn't say is what happens if this low gets taken out. <laughs> that opens square. up the entire, you know, entire uh, leg down into 1500, which would get us 144. Mm -hmm. So that's the downside. So it's a very critical, critical, like during this entire period, we didn't have any, you know, critical price and times. So it's only here. It, they all lined up. So that's why we have to really watch it closely. And we had 45 from the last high to low. So, so there's a lot here on a lot of the markets. And when there's a lot there, the market always tries to get everybody off, off balance before starting Mis anything new. A little misdirection, yep. So here's the um, weekly gold. And, well, we had that ABCD pointed out as a target, and bam, we hit that yep. perfectly. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys can see it. Can you see it? Is it yeah, I can see it. You know, when a target get, hits, you want to kind of show it off. Can you see that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. All right, so yeah, yeah, we hit the target, but a weekly basis, you know, this is really not in a good spot. Do we get above you know, 1692, which is 180 mm -hmm. degrees square? Mm -hmm. But we can see it, say, if the market can hold the lows, you know, as far as the bar goes, you know, we have a open, high, low, close. So if you can hold the lows above 1670, that would be positive. Anytime it's 1650, 1670, all these levels on the way up, if the lows can hold above these, then I think we can, we can sort of call it a, okay, we have enough to start a, some kind of a counter trend rally here or, an, or a new start of an entire new leg. But we have the signs. So, and the sign here would be that you know, we, we definitely hit a target here to finish something up. Let's go back and look at look at copper. Copper, copper didn't did. do do much. It, it's still in the uh, you know it, it's stuck in the channel, and we talked about it just kind of not doing much and being under the channel since we failed these two times, and that's what it's doing. And I think continually, what we really want to watch is if we can take out this channel line and uh, move higher. For now, it looks like we're still going to be messing around but long as we're above um 330 it's on the, it has a positive slant to it agreed weekly was just sort of saved by the bell here so many markets are like that right now where it's closing right on a square mm -hmm. so well, right on a square and it and the lows came right into the uh, lower fork right right exact same angle everything held right there uh, the square is looking a little squirrely here, but then again, it's copper, so it needs to sort of clear these areas before things get things get cleared up a little bit. But for now, uh, the lower channel held, which is positive on, on overall. But ideally, we want to see it get up above ninety to um, get any business done above above um, above that new square. And three forty seems to be the line basis mm -hmm. weekly where we need mm -hmm. to get above move it on to the dollar well well 
left off last week talking about uh, this ABCD target being uh, ABCD, um, the D being a good target, mm -hmm. and the fact that we're squaring out 30, 72 by 36. And we did that. I mean, it was one day early, yeah, a little bit off the chart, a little bit off the mark, but you know, we didn't close up there, did we? Nope. So we, we reversed, and well, for now, it, it's probably going to hold below that level. You know, this 113. Let's say 114. Yeah, that's a good number to go with. And it's possible that if so, the reason I said 114 is, long as we're below 114, it's it's possible that the dollar might have put in a sort of a temporary high, and and we're going to consolidate or correct. So we'll look for that, and the weekly chart will help sort of explain the uh, that position. So here's the weekly. We're 90 weeks out. From the low and we went to uh three quarters of the square to, into the next square mm -hmm. uh, which is fair uh didn't get under um the 112 mark but pretty close 11217 was the close so here i think you know basis daily if we can get under that 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 would be the second signal like hey we have a decent high in place and this 90 square uh is working out i mean the 90 week square is probably working out mm -hmm. and so we'll watch for those signs what you really want to see if there's a you know sort of a medium term high in place we'd want to see you know the lower high come in and then then have the dollar go lower but even with the square it's the same thing applies you know if we if this square gets taken out then you know all bets are off we can get to 130 for all i know yeah that's right but for now watch the 112 level you know long as we're above that it's you know it's very possible that we um we have more to go uh, even though the weekly squared out i mean it could square out next week it could be off by a bar but it's you know 90 weeks 91 weeks we're in that range so we really have to uh, watch this closely mm -hmm. and and the best way to do that is through watching price levels so 112 is still the price level above that i would say is still bullish and if we get under that i would say it's either going to consolidate or probably correct. So we'll keep, keep we'll keep a close eye on this. It's a little too early to get on top of it. All right. Last thing would be Euro. Did the same thing. Went down. Didn't quite get to the square, but close enough. The key thing was it came up to the half square and it stalled uh, Thursday and Friday. I don't think the bigger trend is done yet in the big picture sense. But we did come down 288 degrees and that was a target for a long time. And that 72 would have just given us that much space, you know. So, incredibly, when you don't expect it to hit perfectly, it hits perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> right. It happens, right? So, yeah. anyway. So, again, here's another market that came down into a perfect square, 288 degrees down. Boy, Enzo's a little excited. But, That's um, fun. He likes the euro. He's agreeing about it with the charts. <laughs> He's frustrated because he's long the euro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving on to the weekly euro, you know, we have the same 90 weeks that we had in the dollar as a mirror image. Mm -hmm. And we pretty much came into the half square, which was a full square, 180 degrees up on the weekly dollar chart. So it's the same. It's a similar game. I think now that we got pushed below a par is really the number, which is one third of the square, square mm -hmm. of 90. And we'll have to see how it works out. But long as it's below par, I think um, I think it's weak. And we have this channel line drawn in, very steep. It, it doesn't, you know, it could be a washout, but then we need some proof. So that's why we're watching the uh, watching the daily to see how it works out. But for now, it looks like it's still not quite ready yet, and the downtrend is in full speed. But for some reason, we start turning around here, then we know why, you know, we had this 90 week cycle come into place. So we're watching the daily for, you know, some kind of a sign, first sign, let's say. Mm -hmm. And that would be for it to hold above the half square, 96.8. Well, that's what I got. Very good. Interesting of, uh, how everything's coming to a head right now. Everything is, uh, like they say, cornered. You know? Yep, and it's either going to turn around or it's going to accelerate. <laughs> exactly.
Exactly. Yeah. So that's why this next couple of weeks are really critical to watch. I mean, if you're trading, the trend is not a big deal. You wait for the next trend to develop and you, you just trade it. And, and this kind of information really helps you know why the market turned. So you don't have, you don't right. you're not trying to really catch corners, but just to know what the next leg, what would inspire the next leg. Absolutely. And, and you guys, you know, if you're new, catch the old shows to see, you know, uh, how we thread this every week. And also, if you like our work, you know, feel free to click the like button mm -hmm. and share and uh, hit the bell for the alerts, help the channel grow. And we thank you for that. That's Absolutely. all I got. Ben, let me put it back to you. Sounds good, Barry. Thanks. Good job. Thanks. Well, Ben, it's either slipping through <laughs> or it's just trying to scare you, one of the two. <laughs> Keeping with the theme of markets that are at a very important turning point, here we are. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Absolutely. Nice big ABCD down and it's pressing. And well, the, the, yeah, and a new low for the year. The good news, Barry, I was when I was looking at this, I was like, God darn, here's another market that's at, you know, it's either going to reverse and we're going to head back up and get some sort of counter trend or it's going to accelerate, right? Because right. But, we, but we knew that double bottom is not going to hold. No, so. the double bottom's not going to hold. Here's, <laughs> but here's the key level, right? That's the beautiful thing about the squares is we know this half square, which is called it 11,280. Below right. that, we're in trouble. Yeah. You know, below Thursday, that, we, couldn't, we couldn't close above it on Thursday and that was it. Nope. That's right. I mean, we danced around it for four or five days here, you know, probing, probing, probing. And then, as you said, we closed under Thursday and then it's given it up. So I don't think the odds favor we're going to stop here at this ABCD. But again, we know the spot where we got to say, hey, something different's going on. Mm -hmm. That's this 11,280. We get above it or sit on top of it. Then we can pressure back up here, you know, to the, to the full square. Um, otherwise, you know, Targets like down here at 10,600, 10,660. Mm -hmm. That's the next spot. By the way, all the uh, different levels, you know, Barry's levels from his segment, all the, the levels from my segment and all the markets that we cover are in a, a Google Doc spreadsheet that uh, when we post the link to the video, we'll post the link to it so you can, you can see the, the updated levels. So, I mean, this is not a bullish market. The, the the question is, you know, are we going to go straight down or are we going to, you know, mess around here at the half square for a few days, weeks, who knows? But right now the momentum's down, that push through on Friday, unless, as you were talking about the ES, I kept thinking the same thing here with, with uh, the NQs. Mm -hmm. We don't get back up, you know, Sunday, Monday, it's, it's trouble. You know, we're, we're going to slip. Incidentally, weekly support here is 10,500. So it's in this in this neighborhood down in here, probably like a full eighth. Yeah, it's, it's the eighth, essentially. So your weekly's there. There's your daily. And that's right now, that's where the pressure is pushing towards. Uh, from a timing standpoint, 56 days from, from high to low, if we set in the low, would be early November. And if we do the full 90, you're talking Christmas week, last week of December in there, you know, which I have some, some bigger cycles pointing to both those time frames for, you know, important potential turns. So we'll watch the timing there. Unless we get above the half square, man, this is a market that's in trouble. Absolutely. Anything else to add there? No, we're good. Okay. We have the levels. That's all we need. <laughs> yeah, that's what we need. And then price tells us once, once you have a level, you know, where, you know, where when price moves in or out, you know what, what to do. So in doing the review today, you know, late this afternoon, it's, it's really interesting because just as you found in the, in the markets you covered, Barry, a lot of these commodities are at really important points where it can either accelerate the current trend or it can re reverse and be a corner. As you covered, you know, gold, copper, crude, uh, nat gas is in a similar spot, um, cotton's near a low. Uh, the, the interesting two markets that I'm not gonna cover today because they're still in congestion, but they really have not corrected a lot in price. 
and I'm watching them really closely because if something doesn't go down when everything else is going down, when the tide turns, those usually fly and that's sugar and coffee. So those are two to, to really, you know, I'm keeping an eye on and I'm encouraging people to keep an eye on as well. Uh, let's look at the three markets that we're going to cover. Here's wheat. We had wheat on last week. We've been, you know, had it on, on the show multiple times since this low was coming in and we were sort of triangulating the low. Last week we, you know, we hit this, this high and then we pulled back and then look what we did this week. Today with the crop report, we pushed up over the full square. And as we always say, they never make it easy. We closed right on the full square. So this is this is the level for next week. You know, call it 923. We stay above 923, you know, it's bullish. You know, we're going to go up and test the half square, maybe the full square, you know, and really, really see this market move. If we can't hold this, the next important spot is the half square. Mm-hmm. You know, we want to hold that half square. We didn't even get down to it here on the pullback. This was, you know, a two, three day pullback. And then we we pushed up again. So of the commodities, this one looks really, really strong right now. Um, unlike the other ones that are at sort of, you know, trying to set a bottom off of their corrections, this thing has been leading. You know, we bottomed here in August and we've been, you know, chugging higher and it looks like we're getting close to an acceleration phase here, sort of one of these. This is what we want to try and catch, right? Yep. So, um, but you know, anything... is, it's um, go ahead and go ahead and finish. No, I was going to say anything to add. And what 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 does your eye catch here? Well, like the, you know, we already put in an entire square coming off that low. So, you know, I would say it, it's possible that we started something new, and we can just um, you know trade the pullbacks here, like we've been doing prior to the, you know, after the half square. So it, I think it's, this could be moving, you know, we could have a low in place that we have to sort of um, acknowledge that. Yeah, that's the work in theory right now is that mm-hmm. this is a good low and we're trying to catch this, right? We're trying to catch this third wave, the next, uh, the next big move here. So keep an eye on it. Uh, this week, 923 is the critical level above it. You know, we're looking at higher prices up to around a mm-hmm. thousand and below it, you know, we get, then we got to say, okay, you know, maybe this first leg is done and let's see where this next leg comes in and we can get involved on some sort of reversal here. Mm-hmm. But wheat looks bullish. The, the supposition was we had a low, we, we waited for evidence. We were getting evidence, more evidence, and the evidence continues to mount. So the, the low in wheat looks good. Let's jump to the next one. Here's corn. This one's been a little further ahead of wheat, but similar pattern. It put its low in in July. Wheat was over here in August, but similarly, you know, came out, did a little false break, taking out previous lows, both here and over here. And then it's just been moving up and sort of eating up the squares as we go. And we were, we were looking to see, you know, last week, what are we going to do? We got stopped by the half square. We're going to be able to hold this full square. Well, you can see it push down, push down, and then we end the day above the full square again. So this, if you look at it, the distance from its high, you know, it's only basically what a square and a half off, two squares off the high. Right. So corn looks bullish. The key level here right now is this full square, call it in the 670 area above that. You know, we'll, we're, we're going to push through the highs here if we hold, if we can hold above there. If not, you know, maybe, maybe the initial leg is done and we got to pull back a little bit. But you know, you'll see the levels here, you know, coming down. But I think this has, you know, more definitive, even than wheat, that we, you know, we got a good low there because the push up has been fairly strong. We moved, you know, two full squares up, mm-hmm. two and a half actually. What do you see here, looking at corn? I think uh, continue to trade the long side for now. All of these, you know, it's upside is coming. It's just a matter of watching every day, every every week, and and getting your positions in at the correct places, and having a good risk reward when you jump in, right? Exactly. You know, buying, you know, not on a on not on a stem, but on a pullback to the half square, a pullback that stays on top of the full mm-hmm. square. Mm-hmm. They they give you a good tight stop loss with a really good risk reward. 
So the last one we're going to look at, we only got three for you, silver. Silver, surprisingly, has been outperforming gold, you know, since it's put in its low. Mm -hmm. You know, gold, we're still searching for that low. And Barry was, you know, sort of triangulating that that corner really well, saying, hey, there, there's a there's a shot that we got this low here. We just need to see how price comes out of it because you had a you had price and time. You had good cycles completing there. Well, in, in silver, we've already had a low, a push up and now a higher low. You know, we got this daily reversal here today. Today was the day we got it because we had this. This was the the low bar. Then we had an inside bar, and now we've got the reversal that closed above the full square. So the next big shot is if we take out this downtrend line, it opens up the half square in silver. And that's, call it 2075, 2077 would be the next shot. And you can see that stopped price before on the first attempt here. But this, to me, the reversal today is a really strong sign. The close above the full square, you know, this this market to me looks like we're closer to catching a third wave here uh, than than gold, and maybe it's leading gold at this stage. Uh, what what are your thoughts here on silver, Barry? Well, it, it's uh, basically what you said. It looks like it's uh, it, it could be leading. And it's uh, it's working fairly well. And you know, the only thing is that triangle, right? It's in the middle of a big down leg. So if we break to the upside, we're, we're good to go. That'll be uh, that'll be very positive. Now, if we break to the downside here, technically we can expect it to go back and test the lows again, if not lower. Absolutely, yeah, and no question about but it. The way silver is holding for now, and gold, we saw hit a couple of targets. What we need to see next is some recovery, you know, some some push behind it. So that's what we're watching. Yeah, and, it, and especially with silver here, not only taking out this trend line, but if we can take out this sort of structure that was built exactly you know, after the initial push, it'll give us a lot more confidence that, okay, you know, this low and this low look pretty good. But again, with the with the full square, you know, being able to trade against something like that is really valuable. So we want to see what I'd like to see happen next week is we get a full bar that's above the square. Because right now, you know, part of today's bar, we were below the square. That's one of the, the signs you see when, you know, either you get a full bar below, like here as you're coming down, look at that full bar right there, what happens after that, right? You get the full bar under the square and then the pressure comes. So if we can get a full bar on top of the square, Hopefully we can have some follow through and pressure to the upside as well. You know, but a lot like you were saying in, in your markets, Barry, um, that you review in looking at these commodities, there's a lot of confluence of price and time hitting this past week. You know, whether it's crude, whether it's copper, whether it's gold, bonds, all of them. All of them are coming into important inflection points. So the key thing for us to do is to know the levels and then watch at these at these inflection points. Do we get an acceleration or do we get a reversal? Because those those are the, the major outcomes that happen here. We don't know which one's going to happen when you're coming into it. But certainly if you read the price action and you lose the level, use the levels, you can get an edge of one thing happening over another. And, and that's all we're looking for. So we're looking for that edge. Um, what are you going to be focusing on this week, Barry? Well, everything that squared out, <laughs> for sure, and everything that hit hit critical uh, support or resistance level. So the dollar, I think currencies are really important to watch here, all around. But uh, starting with the dollar and gold to see if we can recover a little bit more, along with silver bonds to see if we can if we're going to make new lows or if we're going to hold. But whatever develops next week, it looks like it could hold, you know, into mid-October or towards the third week, maybe. Right. So it could be a bit of a run if we, if we manage to get some traction here. And, and if we slip, then I think we better get busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it'll be fast moves. It'll be now, fast Barry, and there's a long way to go. So with, the, with all these things squaring out, does that increase your sort of attention and awareness because 
of past history, how it's happened with you. How do you treat the markets differently when you see a week like we just saw where all these important levels, all these different markets, all these different squares are hitting? You know, that's a rare event. And, and this is really a, a rare thing. You don't see so many squares happening at a end of a quarter, you know, all these cycles hitting perfectly. It, it's a kind of a weird thing to see altogether. <laughs> Individually, when it happens, you're basically looking for the next trend. So, you know, squaring out or key time cycles expiring like we did in the S&P. Mm -hmm. They normally signal a, a change in trend. So when the trend changes, you know which side to trade. I mean, that's the, that's the whole idea. Now, you can try to catch corners, but it, it's much easier to trade the trend. So, so that's, that's the way you use those. Now, if they fail, most probably, most likely, and this is the history of it, you know, if you go back and look at all the cases where this happened, it, it really accelerates to the downside. There's no messing around and holding, you know, consolidating under it or none of that stuff. It just goes. It, it kind of creates a panic, doesn't it? It's, it look, well, I guess it is kind of a panic. Um, yeah, it, it looks like a, it can look like a panic for sure. Right. Somehow liquidity just disappears for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's it's a mild panic. Uh, sometimes maybe not so mild. Right. Uh, but you know, you can have just as much strength on the other side if the square holds. You know, so we gotta correct really yeah. watch these. And they don't like I said, this is so rare. And and even getting price and time to square out properly is not that not that common because you have to wait you know if it's 90 days you know it basically you get four a year so it's, it's not that common so when they happen you really have to watch that and and this is one of those times but the, because it's going to define trends so the next couple of weeks has the potential to define trends going into the end of the year if not january so it, it's a big deal yeah I, i'm glad I, you I, asked because i forgot to mention the importance of you know the the, the third quarter here well again i you know I, when i do my review i see what you know what jumps out at me what sort of what's the theme or what's the message and then when you were saying the exact same thing i was like wow this is this is important because i don't go in with a preconceived notion of what the charts are going to say but all of these different markets were hitting like not one hour or four hour support monthly weekly right and not you know small timing of like 30 days or 15 days it was 144 exactly that's and i yeah. said wow this is this is a it's a it's a key spot we're in not in one market but across markets and so i don't know what that means you know is coming or what's what's the cause of it i have no idea and that's that's not what we get paid to do we get paid to to find good setups and then trade them but it really says to me that something is going to happen that's going to be defining, as you said, the trend for the next two, three months, or potentially even longer. Right. Correct. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But anyway, so it's important you rest up. Everybody rest up this week. Be ready to go Sunday night because, as Barry said, this does not happen often, and it's happened this week. And in the last, you know, 10 days or so, all of these markets are aligning to where big moves are going to come out of this one way or another. So uh, we're ready. Hope We hope you guys are ready. We hope you have a great week. Uh, Barry, terrific job today because this is, as I said, this is a key thing. And, and you picked up on it separately from me. So it, it whenever that confluence comes in, we really got to pay attention. Absolutely. Have a good week, everybody. Barry, have a great week, great show, and uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks, Ben. Good job. Bye-bye. All right. Bye.